Okay, here we go. More torques. All right, this is the teeter totter question. Possibly one of the most famous questions in all of physics, at least torques. All right, number one, here you go. Now you're into doing the real problems. They're equilibrium questions. That means some of my torques are going to be equal to zero. Because you've got these kids, they're balanced on a teeter totter, seesaw, whatever you want to call it. All right, when you're doing this problem, the most important thing is you've got to have a drawing to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and get me a decent drawing started in this question. I was looking for my ruler, but apparently I've lost it. Ah, there it is. So I want to get me a good beam. Every problem I'm going to draw as a beam, no matter what the object, I'm going to draw it as a beam, just like this. And hopefully, if your teacher loves you, all the questions will be uniform beams. But anyway, now I'm going to go back, and it's give us a picture right here, and it's trying to help us. It says a, check this out. In the question, it says a uniform 40 Newton beam. The uniform 40 Newton beam tells me in the dead center, I'm going to put me a dot, but in the dead center, I'm going to draw an arrow straight down, I'm going to write 40 newtons on it. That's what uniform tells me is dead center of this beam is the weight. And then it tells me a little more information. It says there's one kid sitting on one end weighing 500 and another kid weighing 350 sitting on the other end of the beam. So we've got two kids on here. Uh, let's see. It tells me that this kid, the kid on this end is 500. The reason why this is always like the first tort question you work practical wise is because if you look, there's no angles in it at all. There's another kid sitting somewhere down here, putting a little dot. This kid weighs 300 and 50 newtons sitting on this end. And now what it does, it comes back in the problem. And by the way, if you're looking at this picture, you need to be screaming, something has to be wrong. You've got a bunch of forces all going down with nothing holding it up. Well, if you're screaming that, you're right. You see, it's sitting on top of this little fulcrum here in the middle, this little pivot point or this little point right here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go right to the center. I'm going to draw a force perpendicular. I'm going to draw it straight up. And I'm just going to say we've got a normal force there. Uh, sometimes we'll call it a reaction force in these torque questions. But now this picture should make you look much, feel, make you feel much, much better. And this picture has gave me a couple of things. It's told me from here to here is one and a half meters. But it has told me from here to here is X. So I have no idea what this distance is. So the question is pretty much just asking. And it could really ask two things. One, it could ask you what this normal force is. Well, if it asks me for that normal force, that would be great because all I'm going to do is write sum of the forces Y and then I'm going to write N minus 500 minus 40 minus 350 and holy cow, I've got 890. So, wow, I now know normal force. Unfortunately, the problem did not ask me to get normal force. It asked me to find that X. So I'm going to do a torque problem. Well, to do this, I need to pick a pivot point. Now, reality of it is I can pick any of these spots to be a pivot point. Here, here, or here. I'm going to choose the middle to be my pivot point. I'm not choosing the middle because it's the middle. That's got nothing to do with it. I'm choosing the middle because of something I said in an earlier video. If I pick that to be my pivot point, it cancels out all the forces. So by making that a pivot point, I just got rid of not only the 40, but also this 890 going the other direction. So by making that the pivot point, I canceled out everything at the pivot point. Now you can tell there's only going to be two forces in this problem. So to work this problem, scroll this up a little bit, we need to do a sum of the torques equation part. So let's see if there's a way to keep the picture kind of handy and still have room to do a little bit of writing on that at the same time. So here we go. Let's see if we can do this. 
So I'm going to, let's go with the black here. So let's do this. I want to do a sum of the torques for this question. Well, I want to do something. I want to play the clockwise or counterclockwise game. So let's see if we can't do this. All right, my pivot point is dead in the center, right? So my pivot point is here in the middle. So let's push down. Push down. Well, that's pretty quick. That's a counterclockwise. If this thing's balanced, I know what the other one's got to be. Let's push down at 350. That's clockwise. And the thing is, if something's balanced, there's got to be one of each. So I like to, again, I like to write my clockwises and then subtract the counterclockwise. So I'm going to write FR. What's FR? It would be 350 times X. So this one would be 350 times X. Now I'm going to subtract my counterclockwise. And I've got 500 times it's at, how far is 500 away from the pivot? One and a half. So times 1.5. And it says that this thing is just in equilibrium. It's sitting still. So I'm going to write equal zero. So I've got 350x minus 500 times one and a half. Well, that's 750 equals zero. So now finish solving this, bring 750 over, and it looks like I'll have 750 divided by 350. Now I've got 2.1 meters. So x is 2.1 meters. And now we know where the other kid needs to sit in this problem in order to make it balance out. So that's all we had in this one. Well, what made this one so handy? Once again, while this one was so nice, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Everything was at 90 degrees in this picture. But we did learn one other thing, like where we didn't have that normal force. Use some sense. If you've got three things going down, there's got to be at least one going up, and vice versa. If you have a picture where something is pointing towards the right when you're drawing the picture, there better be something pointing left in that picture somewhere. So those are just little things to think about. It's only seven minutes into this video. Let's go ahead and do one more video. And it looks like we've got a person, big old muscly arm, and they're holding a baseball. And the problem's been really nice. This one's pretty well given us a diagram down here. It also says that the person's forearm doesn't weigh anything, which makes this a whole lot easier. So this person has a massless arm. That's, that's, wow, that's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, let's see if we can't draw a little better picture of the forearm. So even though this is an arm, radius and ulna, scratch radius, scratch ulna, that radius and ulna is now a beam. Can you tell I'm really trying to drive this across to you that everything is a beam. So here's my beam. This problem goes ahead and gives me a picture. It says right here, I've got an R <coughs> going down. It says that I've got some force going up. Got a little crooked here, but these are all supposed to be at 90 degrees, which makes this problem easier. And then out in this person's hand, they are holding a 50 Newton baseball, apparently. And the question wants to know the force in this bicep muscle here. It wants to know that force in that bicep. Well, I've got a question. I need to know some distances here. And it gives me a little bit here. It tells me that from here to here is apparently 35 centimeters. So that's 35 meters. And it also tells me, now this one's going to be a little bit harder. I don't know how I'm going to fit it in. But it tells me this little distance here. It tells me the distance between these is apparently 0 0.03 meters or 3 centimeters over here. Now it wants me to pick a pivot point. Well, let's look at the question. It's wanting me to find the force in that bicep. 
I know this one. I could pick this to be the pivot point. But that don't really do me no good because then I have two unknowns. I, I don't want to pick a known for a pivot point. I need to pick an unknown. So I'm going to pick R to be the pivot point. When I pick R to be the pivot point, then that means R doesn't matter in my torque problem anymore. R doesn't factor. So all I want to do now is this. Is this 50 clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, let's look. Put my little ruler down here and let's push it down. Push my ruler down. Well, that's clockwise. What you want to bet what that F is. So let's go right here and push up. And we got counterclockwise. So we've got our clockwise, we've got our counterclockwise. All we got to do is put them in and subtract them. So I'm going to go 50 times, so it's FR, 50 times 0.35. Then I'm going to subtract my other torque. My other torque up here is F times O3. I'm going to set it all equal to zero. And again, this is really, and your teacher might graph, this is really a sum of the torque question right here. But anyway, let's see if we can't finish, let's see if we can't finish solving this one. 50 times 0.35 equals 17.5 minus 0.03F, and all that's equal to zero. So let's go in here, 17.5 divided by 0.03. 583 newtons. All right, there's just a second basic torque kind of problem. Uh, next video, we're going to move on and start doing beams, uh, things hanging off buildings and things of that nature. But we're kind of getting you a good start on here.